In our vlog today, we are going to spend some time looking at spiritualism. What is important to grasp is that spiritualism has become fluid in its meaning and is quite diverse in its practices. Today, Kirsten and I have taken some time to explore spiritualism in a way that will help us to discern, determine, and define what it is. In our research, we've discovered many interesting definitions and statistics that we would like to share to see if spiritualism has had an impact on the number of people who identify as spiritual but not religious. Spiritual but not religious. It's a new catchphrase in our society. People acknowledge there is a spiritual side to the world, but they reject the trappings of organized religion. People don't want to acknowledge or define their issues as sin, but they will participate in a 12-step program that helps them identify what their issues are. We know that people are looking for a spiritual tribe, a place they can belong and be open and honest about what they're dealing with and be taught about a better way to do life. The church needs to be open to having these dialogues with people without using Christianese, but acknowledging people have hurts and joys. They have pain, they have trauma, they have happiness, and that ultimately the gospel is the salve for their wounds. 2 Timothy 3.5 in the Amplified Version reminds us that they are holding on to a form of outward godliness or religion, although they have denied its power for their conduct nullifies their claim of faith. In Canada and in the U.S., there is a growing population of people, 27%, who are identifying as spiritual but not religious. This is up 8% from 2012 to 2017. To discern this, we must first define our terms. We understand that there is a growing curiosity behind spirituality, which at first glance sounds encouraging. Our first definition today states that Spirituality is a broad concept with room for many interpretations and many perceptions. It includes a sense of connection to something bigger than ourselves, and it typically involves a search for the meaning of life. This broad definition makes room for many different belief systems and is widely universal, which means people pray to find comfort with God or just a higher power. This definition is fluid because it is widely personal, which means as a person grows and changes, their definition of spiritualism changes with them. This definition is highly emotional and feelings-based. Many experts weigh in when defining spiritualism. One expert says, spirituality is the aspect of humanity that refers to the way individuals seek and express meaning and purpose and the way they experience their connectedness to the moment, to self, to others, to nature, and to the significant or sacred. We must be mindful that as we define terms to understand that they are limited by our language and context. To define religion, we must Remember that the root of the word is linked to the word oblige or being bound to something. So religion is being connected or bound to something. Religion is better defined by using a description of what it does or helps with. We might say that religion is an explanation of the ultimate meaning of life. It is based on an idea and an experience that is beyond the ordinary. It follows a set of creeds, a code, it has public and private rituals and routines, and has a community of like-minded followers. To define spirituality, we must go back to the root of the word spirit, which is breath or wind. It's unseen, it moves at its own accord. So spirituality are the unseen parts of us, which are distinct from the physical parts of us. If we apply spirituality to the religious world, we mean religion is our external life and spirituality our internal life. People believe in a spiritual journey, but are rejecting the trappings of religion. So, those who claim to have no religion, but are spiritual, are likely making up their own religion, as they normally follow the examples of rituals, routines, meetings, and a code of ethics. 
Another definition of spiritualism, which is linked to religion, identifies itself as a movement based on the belief that departed souls can interact with the living. Despite it being classified under the religious category, this definition is not supported by the Bible. Yet, modern spiritualists point to biblical examples of these practices to give credibility to their beliefs. One example is when King Saul visits a medium to connect with the late Samuel. A New Testament example is during the transfiguration of Christ, where Jesus is recorded talking with the late Elijah and Moses. This unconventional new movement, which began in 1848 during supernatural events in a farmhouse in New York, naturally provoked opposition from the church. Spiritualism through this lens made way for the practices of psychics, telepathy, clairvoyance, and the more complex phenomenon of spirit contact. Although spiritualist practices have been motivated by mere curiosity and fascination with the supernatural, they have also been driven by more serious concerns about the fate of the human soul. For those who have lost their faith in traditional Christianity, spiritualists have offered a new religion based not on an ancient tradition, but on facts that apparently can be observed by anyone. The Pew Research conducted a study that defines spiritualism under the banner of New Age. Here, spiritualism is defined as the belief in reincarnation, astrology, psychics, and the presence of spiritual energy in physical objects like mountains or trees. These beliefs are present both among those who identify as religious and those who don't. According to this study, those who believe in spiritual energy can be in physical things, 37% of Christians compared to 47% of non-religious. There is no difference between the Christians and the non-religious who believe in psychics at 40%. 29% of Christians believe in reincarnation, while 38% of non-religious hold to this belief. 26% of Christians believe in astrology, while 32% of non-religious do as well. Overall, roughly six in 10 adults accept at least one of these new age beliefs. Among those who identify as religious or spiritual, 65% believe in at least one new age practice. Whereas those who identify as spiritual but not religious, 77% of them believe in at least one New Age practice. People are seeking spiritual life, but they have accepted the counterfeit that the world has offered to them. The darkness of this world and the spiritual forces that we battle, as outlined in Ephesians 6, are more than willing to put their darkness on display. People make mistakes by ignorance. And we must educate ourselves and our church communities to recognize and steer clear of these demonstrations, which can be powerful and attractive, but they remain counterfeit to Holy Spirit. Moses teaching about staying away from evil as they enter the promised land of Deuteronomy 18. King Saul in the medium of Endor in 1 Samuel 28. Paul and Simon the sorcerer in Acts 8 and then again with the sons of Sceva and the response of the people in Acts 19 are all examples for us to follow. While the demoniac demonstrations appear guileless, let's watch this show. Let's have our cards read. There's a fortune telling happening. Let's go check it out. Let's see this psychic. It's all for fun. We must recognize the dark power that is behind it and be on our guard against it. We must continually arm ourselves for the spiritual battle that we face and ask Holy Spirit to help us discern the holy from the profane. And when we recognize it for what it is, we have to call it out and take a stand against it. 2 Timothy 3.5 says they will act religious, but they will reject the power that can make them godly. Stay away from people like this. We'd like to finish this blog by sharing what the Bible says on spiritualism. True spirituality is not something to be achieved or conquered. 
It is better understood as a progressive journey throughout the Christian life. The first step towards being spiritual is to be born of God's Spirit by accepting Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Once our spirit is made alive in Christ, we understand that spiritualism has a deeper meaning. Specifically, it has purpose in life and death in a transforming kind of way. The spiritual person in this context is contrasted with the natural person as we see in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 14 and 15. Therefore, being spiritual means being born again. When we focus on letting God transform us from deep inside, in those areas that we often try to hide from ourselves and others, the result will be an outward, observable transformation. Being spiritual means desiring and seeking changes in our inner selves. This change can only happen with God. We can't do this on our own, which is why spiritualism in every form other than the biblical one offers, offers very little that has a lasting impact on the human life. The definition of spiritualism from the biblical worldview helps us to identify what truly brings meaning to life and answers three fundamental questions that every human seeks to answer. Those questions are, where did it all begin? Or where did it begin? Why am I here? And where am I going? Through the biblical lens, we can define spiritualism and we see how many of the other definitions we've looked at today are being clarified or fulfilled through the biblical definition. This is because to be like Jesus is what it means to be truly spiritual. Therefore, saying that I am spiritual but not religious is nothing more than a cute tongue-in-cheek saying that falls flat because it's meaningless purposeless, and provides zero hope for life after death.